glad to know that you showed up at the uh, children's village and uh, left with a husband. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that on your advertisements. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't exactly leave with a husband, but it was shortly after that. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. It's the weekly podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church. I'm Tim Peabody. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to our guest. Everybody knows and loves Christelle Timms, who leads our prayer ministry here at the church. Welcome, Christelle. Thank you. Good How to are be you here. and Bobby doing? We are doing well. We are doing well. Well, good. Uh, glad to see y'all have survived almost a year of the pandemic. We have indeed. We have yeah. indeed. Well, how has it been for your family? Um, honestly, we have continued to be pretty busy overall. We, um, in my work in communications, there's a lot of digital <laughs> going on. So that really kind of ramped up a little bit. So it's okay. been pretty busy with my work. So you work at the Baptist Children's Village. I do. And uh, does that have you traveling around Mississippi a good bit? Uh, before the pandemic, I traveled a lot uh -huh. around Mississippi, some outside of Mississippi, but mostly within the state. And um, so after the pandemic hit, um, I went for a season where I did no traveling mm -hmm. at all. Nobody wanted me to come and speak to them. Right. <laughs> Um, so we did a lot of focus on digital communications during that time. Yeah. Um, and now, um, and, and for a time, we didn't have any outside guests on our campuses. Yeah. And so um, just the folks that kind of work directly with the children there. But now we've learned a little bit more and um, learned how we can keep people safe. And so um, our staff is beginning to travel some more to the campuses. So I'm doing some of that. Good. Um, traveling. <clears throat> How many campuses does the village have? We have seven, seven residential campuses, campuses all throughout over Mississippi. The state. All over the state. North, south, east, west. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's a fairly recent thing. What was it? Eight or ten years ago that you moved to multiple campuses? Oh, no. We. Um, I'm wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. We really had our first um, satellite campus in the early 70s. Okay. Um, and, but we did add several like since 2004. Okay. We added several since then. So it might appear that that was kind of a new thing because it was, but it adds, I used adds to several only pretty quickly. <laughs> I used to think of the village as just being at the big campus right. in Jackson. But now it's not, is it there at all? Is it just <clears throat> all over the state at the smaller campuses? Right, right. So a lot of people still think that, that, you know, we are still a ministry in central Mississippi. Yeah. But we no longer have one large campus anywhere. We've it's, got it's just campuses all, all over. smaller, more family, small campus environment um, all over the state. Um, we have one here in Rankin County. That's probably our closest residential campus. Okay. And I've heard you have a wonderful director. <laughs> we do. He have must have a come from a great church. <laughs> he did come from yeah. a great church, but he came from a great ministry first. <laughs> he, that's right. Seen was, uh, was a child at the, the village when he was young. He was. He, he likes to tell people that he holds the record for um, the longest tenure as a BCV resident. Hey, that's true, I bet. So <laughs> um, he enjoys that. But a lot of people don't realize that um, Sane and Bobby and I lived at the Baptist Children's Village uh, at the same time. I mean, Wait, obviously, I... <laughs> yes. In fact, Sane and that. Bobby were in the same cottage for a time. No kidding. When they were younger at the Baptist Children's Village. And so... Um, now, I only that's recently a, that's learned a that little you had been tidbit. There. I didn't know that Bobby also was a kid at the village. Yes, yeah, he he lived there, came to live at the Baptist Children's Village when he was a young child and really? stayed there um, a long time. Not as long as Sane, because Sane holds the record, but a long time. And he and I actually met there. I didn't move to the Baptist Children's Village until I was 16. Really? And so we met there married at um, 
the chapel that was on our Black Chapel campus. Uh-huh. And huh. the rest is history, as well, they say. Cool. <laughs> I, I did not know that. Well. But um, it's a... There's a lot of um, extraordinary things that we can celebrate that God um, has done in our family and certainly through the Baptist Children's Village. Mm-hmm. Well, we appreciate your work there. Uh, you're also the director of the, the prayer team for our church, and you guys in the last couple of years have renewed our efforts to have people praying in the war room during each of our mm-hmm. worship services. We love that and appreciate <clears throat> y'all doing that. Um, what else is going on with the prayer team? We, we are really excited about how folks have responded to the war room. I mean, it's just, um, I think every week there's some encouragement that comes from people's experience Good. through the war room. So we really appreciate um, that so much. We've also kind of had a renewed effort to um, enlist folks into the intercessory prayer ministry Good. in our prayer room. Um, so we've got slots available. So. so those are people that pray in the prayer room at the church during the week and they can sign up for an hour or so, mm-hmm. uh, at any point in the week and just, that's their hour. They come up and they pray through the requests that were submitted from right. the church. Right. It's a little different than the prayer room because in the prayer room, we're really focused on seeing God work through our worship services, right. um, and praying sp- specifically, mm-hmm. um, for that. In the intercessory prayer ministry, um, it's much more focused on praying for individuals and the needs um, that individuals have. Um, much more confidential kind mm-hmm. of environment there, but um, it's a great opportunity to just set aside that hour to come and take a look at people's specific needs that they have and, mm-hmm. and pray for Um, people's burdens and to celebrate them um, when God answers prayers. Well, I know I'm one of hundreds of people in the church that have gotten a note, handwritten note from Mm -hmm. somebody in the prayer room saying, we prayed for you today. Uh, And that's so encouraging to people. We do have several of our folks that are involved in the intercessory prayer ministry that really have a passion for um, writing those encouraging notes, and they're really good at it. It means a lot. And it does. We hear all the time feedback from folks that that really meant a lot, too, so Mm -hmm. I appreciate their heart in that. We have Life Action coming up. (laughs) Life Action Summit starts March 21st and goes through March 28th. I know you guys have been leading us to pray uh, a lot in in regard to that, life groups are adopting members of the Life Action team mm-hmm. to pray for individually. We have the prayer guide for the days leading up to the Life Action Summit. Uh, we have a prayer meeting this Sunday night. Uh, so Sunday at 5 p.m., we're going to be praying. In... I got my I was date say, wrong. I think it's a week next. From I was like, I think we had one more week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but a I wasn't going to call Sunday. you out. Uh-huh. Uh, I should know that, but yeah, a week from Sunday, we'll have a prayer meeting that'll be a week before the Life Action Summit, so at 5 p.m. on right. Sunday the 14th. That sounds right, 14th. We'll be praying then. <clears throat> right. um, what else do we need to know about Life Action or about the prayer efforts leading up to that? Sure. Um, we are um, continuing to communicate. In fact, this week, the Life Group should get some more information. Uh, about those opportunities to pray with us uh, about life, the Life Action team coming. Um, I think our team um, really would love to see um, folks just be more aware of how God is at work around us. Mm-hmm. He, he is at work around us, you know, and I think a lot of times when things are... Um, in a state of crisis like they are, um, and, and people um, are on this emotional roller coaster, we forget that God is in um, all of those details, and He, you know, He is present with us. and And so, I think our prayer uh, is um, that through life action, we would just become more aware of God's presence and His work around us and and in our lives and in the lives of those people that we love. Yeah, amen, I agree. You wanna share a devotion with us today? Actually, um, yes, and, and as I was thinking about 
um, life action. <clears throat> I thought I might share the, the prayer focus for today um, out of our prayer calendar that we have uh, and make a few comments on that that I think are relevant to what we were just talking about. But today, the focus says, pray that adult Christians will set a pattern of seeking the Lord for all things so that younger generations may find strength and hope in the Lord, especially in times of crisis. And there's two things I see in that that really stand out to me. First, we, we want to be disciplined in seeking the Lord in all things. But there's also that component of so that the younger generation may find strength and hope in the Lord. So we want to um, be a model for that. We want to mentor that next generation mm -hmm. in that effort. Um, one of the passages that it lists on today's um, focus uh, comes from Acts 17, 26 through 27. So I'll read that. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. But there's another passage in um, Acts uh, that I thought about as I was reading this. It's in Acts 3. <clears throat> 19 and 20 it says repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord that he may send the christ appointed for you jesus so when i when i thought about the the prayer focus and um seeking the lord and modeling that for that next generation um the author of this devotional book, When God Shows Up, Essays on Revival, says about Acts 3, 19 through 20, the scripture speaks of times of refreshing. Such a time is not so much an experience as it is a person, a waking up of the presence to the presence of Christ in our lives. So I think that's our prayer, that we would awaken to the presence of Christ in our life uh, and that we and, and people that we love would feel their way toward him mm -hmm. and find him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, let's pray. I'm going to ask you to pray. Before we do, I just want to remind folks to pray for a few people in our church. Um, one, not everybody knows Daryl Strickler. He's pretty new to the church, but Daryl uh, is having a heart cath Friday. So uh, pray for him on Friday and for his wife. And also a couple that we haven't mentioned have lost loved ones. Mary Sanders lost her brother. Uh, funeral will be Saturday. Um, and also Melanie White lost her mom this last weekend. So we want to remember them in prayer. Um, Christelle, why don't you lead us now? Surely. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, this is your day. God, help us to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we are lifting up Mr. Strickland to you today. God, help him. Um, give him a strong body uh, to recover quickly, God, as he um, has this procedure done uh, tomorrow. We just pray for him and the physicians involved in that process. God, I want to lift up our friends, uh, Mary and Melanie, God, they've lost these loved ones. God, we just pray that you would comfort them and their families. And God, just um, put your loving arms around them and let them know of, of your presence. And God, I want to uh, specifically pray for our church, God, as we approach the time when, when life action comes. God, we know that you are at work around us, God. And whether life action comes or not, God, we know that you are at work, but we just pray that, um, that you would use this team, God, to help us to focus and to help us to truly, God, realize um, your presence and your desire, God, to um, walk, for us to walk more closely with you, God, and to recognize the works um, that you are doing and that you want to do in our lives. So God, just awaken us 
to your presence, God, and use this time for your glory. I do pray for our church, God, that you would continue um, to provide unity uh, in our body. God, that we would be a powerful, powerful resource for you um, and that you would be glorified. God, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for um, your great love and mercy for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Christelle, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for we the invitation. With you. Glad to know that you showed up at the uh, Children's Village and uh, left with a husband. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that on your advertisements. <laughs> well, no, I didn't exactly leave with a husband, but it was shortly after that. But God certainly um, used the ministry of the Baptist Children's Village to bring us together. I tell people, you know it's a work of God when he can bring someone from Seattle, Washington, and someone from Detroit, Michigan, together in Jackson, Mississippi. Wait, who's from Seattle and who's from Detroit? Bobby's from Seattle. And I'm from Detroit. Detroit. How about that? We pronounce it Michigan here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I didn't know you, you are learning from... all kind of new things today. I am. Uh, <laughs> well, that's cool, and um, I would never would have known that if I hadn't uh, hadn't gotten to talk to you today. So absolutely, thanks for telling us. Um, oh, I wanted to tell people uh, we're coming up on one year since we started the podcast. Like yes. This, this month will be one year. Yes. And every few months, the podcast team, you know, Dalton, Tom, uh, Paige. Paige has the most thankless job, by the way. She writes the descriptions of each podcast oh, episode. So yes. she has to listen to them all, write a description out before it goes. So anyways, we talk every once in a while about how long are we going to do the podcast? Uh, and I think that a year is a good amount of time to do the podcast. We've done how many episodes? 79, 80? 79. 79 episodes. It's a lot of episodes, especially when you're the one <laughs> editing them, Tom. Uh, and so I'm going to request, because I too am a man under authority, I can't say we're killing the podcast. Because <laughs> uh, if my boss says, no, you're not, uh, then That's we're right. going to keep going. Uh, but I am going to request that we make one year the, the end point. For the podcast, so that means a couple more. I episodes barely got done. in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that says nothing about the order in which we wanted you to be here. We asked you many months ago. Uh, so yeah, that's that's something that I'm going to request. I love the podcast, and I love that people have watched it, and it's gotten us to uh, through a year of the pandemic, and so I'm thankful for it. Uh, but we will end it at some point, and I think one year is the right time to end it. So. Those of you who watch, thank you. If you've made it to this point in the episode, you really watch the podcast. And so you're the people I'm talking to. Uh, love y'all and want to keep this going. Uh, but at some point, we have to tell Tom, Dalton, Paige, and myself, all right, y'all have other jobs. Get back to it. So that's where we are on the podcast. Uh, hope to see you again next week. Uh, this is Morrison Heights Family Connect. We love our family. <laughs>